Um, I don't have the I don't have the best connection, so I'm going to try my best. Yeah, if it fails a little bit, I'll stop my video. Um, but here we go. So to kick this off, I'm going to do a little bit of a different UX showcase, as I thought this was going to be the last UX showcase of this year. I saw in the updated schedule there's actually one or two more um, in December, but this is the last one in this kind of format where there's like multiple UX showcases in one kind of big sitting. So um, for those who don't know, I, I will be offboarding at the end of this month, and I thought it would be nice as this an amazing year to kind of look back at, at how GitLab has been in the last four years. Um, Pedro and Tori have been at GitLab as long as I have, and I think um, we all can kind of present a unique opportunity uh, or unique GitLab's design journey across those series. So that is what I would love to highlight here um, a bit. So why look back in time, right? Um, I think there's uh, quite some value uh, in knowing the past from where we have come to kind of, you know, recognize how far we have come um, for enjoyment, but also for inspiration to see, you know, where should we be headed next. Uh, I did some interviewing uh, across the organization. I've spoken with um, DZ, the original creator of GitLab. I spoke with Sid, our CEO. I spoke with Christy and I spoke with Tari. There's many more people that I could have spoken with, of course, but at some point you got to stop and um, bring uh, bring the story to uh, to everyone here. So on to the next. So what I've done is uh, basically to have some kind of like a, a measure of progression. And for that, I'm, I'm taking a little bit uh, towards the Nielsen Norman group, which have uh, created like some blog posts on design maturity in organizations. This is quite old, though the general lessons uh, are still applicable to today's uh, time. There's a little bit of a bias towards agency consumer focused design and um, research maturity isn't well as well mentioned in that uh, in that article as it as it could have been. Um, I think they kind of skip over it a bit, though, you know, research, research maturity kind of influenced design maturity in the end. Um, a brief note on design maturity. There's like these levels that you skip through these phases. And for some reason, there are right now cars coming through my through my street well the whole day there wasn't a car to be seen uh, but it makes it a bit difficult to progress through these levels um, very quickly although I think throughout the journey I'm going to tell uh, is that GitLab has been exceptional as at, at growing through these stages so there's of course always some internal friction getting everybody along in this kind of mindset of why design is needed and, and what kind of value it can provide uh, skill development, of course, the UX team needs to be all, you know, get up on that 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 higher level of understanding. Um, and of course, the regressions can happen as well. Uh, for example, by hiring too quickly, um, that can happen. You know, that the, the the overall skill, the average skill of all designers involved, can decrease a little bit, and that makes things um, more difficult. As well as, of course, all the moving parts, getting all the stakeholders involved and getting them aligned and moving us uh, forward in that sense. So to give a brief overview, I got a lot of slides. So I'm not gonna pause too much at, at, at every slide, but if you wanna hit back uh, on the slides, please do so in the, in the presentation link I've provided. There's always resource links at the bottom, but this is a brief overview of Nielsen Norton Group description of every level kind of, and uh, they, Kind of decide on you know hey what is uh, what is happening in each of these stages and how do you progress so going on to where we are at or at least where we've begun design before 2016 this is even before our time before the first ux team kind of design um, there was the first design though um, uh, you know the GitLab design project was created was tested with users though it was mostly done though uh, by internal release candidates this was on dev.gitlab.org. We still have it there, and I think it's still kind of in use. But these days, we're uh, we are much uh, in a much better place where gitlab.com is updated. I think daily these days, uh, with the newest of the newest, which is amazing. And uh, I spoken with DZ, and he said the reason why we hired the first designer back at that time 
uh, was basically to have better, uh, better looking UI to get a little bit uh, beyond the bootstrap uh, UI that was used back at that time. And there was also a lot of controversial changes and, and UI being implemented by developers um, that basically just needed professional input. So from there, we went on to 2016. Um, and I think we've never hit stage one. Uh, I think we've always started at stage two, which is developer-centered user experience. It's like it's a developer user experience, um, uh, you know, application and the, the mindset behind that as well. So going into that a little bit further, I think we might have entered even stage three a little bit, uh, which is called Skunk Work User Experience. So there's like these small kind of uh, things that are happening in design. People are acknowledging that, you know, design is needed, uh, though we, uh, we are relying too much still on personal judgment of the design team. You know, you are not the user. This is, of course, a given these days, but back in that time, that was a bit different, I would say. Feel free to read through all of this. I don't have time to go over uh, too much, but that's where we have uh, the link for it. So going into GitLab design in 2016, I think this is kind of interesting. This was the introduction year of the UX team. Um, there was a, uh, a need to focus on both improving the existing UI as well as developing for new features. This was basically done in, in four months to grow from one to six people, which was quite a lot, and was more than originally intended. Fun fact, if you go towards the issue included in the resource, this is the original issue that kind of discusses it. It's kind of fun to jump into. Um, back then, we had reporting to a backend director, then a front-end lead. Uh, you know, it was a lot of chaos around that time, but it was uh, still a, you know, a very fun experience, I would say. Uh, DZ was kind of unofficially part of the team and uh, cared very much of UX, but that's, uh, that's always a good thing. And uh, speaking with Sid, uh, he said uh, back at that time, um, and UX was positioned under engineering uh, to be geared for productivity over design excellence. So if it was its own department back at that time and it would grow to be that way, uh, then we would optimize for better design, but you know, less of, uh, of an output, et cetera. And it, you didn't need the best design for GitLab at that time, just you know, get us on that way and get us moving, basically. Um, going forward, I'm going a little bit faster because I know the time. We had some uh, important change in navigation. This was actually before the UX team started. Um, there was a change from the left sidebar navigation structure to the overall horizontal navigation structure. This is actually personally a trigger for me to get interested and invested in GitLab as a community designer because I thought this change was controversial, uh, controversial to say the least. And I was interested in like, why would you make this change while uh, the other one worked so much better and also differentiated that much more from the competitor of uh, GitHub, for example. Anyway, lots of things to read. Please read through it. Uh, here are some examples of how it originally looked like and how we kind of moved uh, to more, towards a more horizontal um, design change. This doesn't show the eventual horizontal design, but it gives you some cues. Some cues. And of course, we moved to Sketch, which was uh, quite important. Um, I think Tori and Pedro can still remember using Entitype, which kind of was like a browser-based design program. Uh, very interesting to work with, but didn't scale that well when we scaled up to, towards six people, uh, with most of the people uh, kind of used to more design programs like Sketch. So that was a, a quick decision, I would say. Um, then the first results were coming in, I would say, for the new design team. So we were implementing or at least uh, designing for search and filters instead of t a tabbed or drop down interface for uh, scanning through backlogs uh, of our issue tracker. Uh, pipelines were introduced where we used to only have builds. Uh, those are now called jobs. We introduced another higher today level, which was pipelines, which kind of combined multiple jobs into one big pipeline. And of course, anti-stage, which kind of was the first evidence of us having personalized illustrations. So that was kind of like a, a nice milestone to, to mark there. Then uh, I think this was a, a good point in time. Uh, our first UX researcher was hired, Sarah. Um, there was a gap in between designers and developers. This was what uh, DZ uh, told me. 
uh, devs knew the product better and, uh, you know, designers weren't subject matter experts and we needed to get some things very right. So that's why the need was recognized for UX research to, to get in there. And that's what we did. I think that has been a, a great, <laughs> a great help since. Uh, review apps is a quick, a quick note there. Review apps were already there in 2016 uh, and it was a, an important step. I think, uh, you know, the cons to consider like a feature not geared at a very technical persona, but also for all the other stakeholders involved in software development, such as product managers, designers, and kind of like decrease that iteration cycle is, a, is an important step into, you know, GitLab's product maturity as well as our process improvements. Going on 2017, I'm going a little bit faster every time. Uh, our persona discovery started. I think this was very interesting. Uh, we didn't have as good as a clue as who are uh, the people we were designing for. So Sarah and I think Tari was looking into that at that time. We were venturing into whiteboarding exercises. This, ha it, this uh, happened at the um, GitLab Summit in Cancun and was kind of like the first kind of like look into that and this is kind of like these progressive steps in design maturity that I want to highlight here uh, and kind of gave us an option to really think holistically together with the whole design team which hadn't happened before that time. So here are some 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 photos just for <laughs> nostalgic purposes I would say. Um, so that is fun to look into. And then there was another navigation redesign. So it's funny that the first navigation redesign was restructured again was turned around because we went back to the left navigation um, bar design uh, because it did work better and people were confused basically and it was also kind of like the first case of where we had something resembling a feature flag uh, where people could turn on this new navigation instead of being forced into it which we had a lot of uh, you know a negative feedback on from the first time uh, we'd thrown that around. Um, so this was GitLab 9.4, 10.0 around that time. Uh, a little uh, shoot back to, to Pedro. There was also some um, uh, pool information architecture or semantic versioning or architecture there uh, where you know, we grouped the information and we redesigned what had to be the top level navigation, what can, gonna go in the sidebar, et cetera. Uh, it was an interesting uh, time to see that finally change and we still have the benefits today. So the design system, of course, we didn't immediately have design.gitlab.com. Yeah, we had the repository and using brand AI at that time, which was kind of like a plugin for sketch. Um, we were, you know, very uh, much in a need of growing design, uh, especially scaling visual consistency across GitLab was getting harder and harder, the more team members we were adding towards the team. So we're looking into this. Um, that was super interesting. The icon library was a part of that. Um, I believe, let me see, the GitLab SVG project was int uh, introduced there at that time as well. And we had a dedicated designer kind of focusing on the visual aspects of every new icon, moving us away from Font, Font Awesome, which was the icon library we were using before that. And then the dev to DevOps uh, move happened uh, in, inside of GitLab. Um, we kind of finished the, the master plan, uh, but it's kind of like this, this moved us towards the territory of vision work, like do how much ahead into the future are we looking at? And this is kind of like that first opportunity. There's a little link into the vision presentation. Uh, back at that time, I think Tori and I worked on some of the vision mockups, but the whole, the whole team was invested, I would say. So GitLab first look, big, big point in time. Um, we needed a, you know, a research participant database. Uh, Sarah was focusing uh, full time on this. And this kind of evolved over time, I would say, but this was a, like the blog post mentioned here, kind of like invested the audience and community into like, hey, why do we need this? And this is kind of like the first step into that. So looking back at that, this was, I think, our step into stage four dedicated UX budget. Um, there was a budgeteering involved in, if you can say it like that, to get that UX research participant program set up. Um, there was now a dedicated UX team. Uh, you know, we were getting into that, into that uh, phase of, of, you know, we were still 
scattered around the company, but you know, we had some things going for us, which were dedicated towards UX. We had some ownership uh, over you, uh, over the user experience as a whole. And basically, you know, uh, as I said here in the last phase, it, it was on for us now to collect evidence in, in towards moving us uh, higher up in, into that, you know, strategic place that where design is, is will be able to thrive. 2018, this is like the last year I have some points on and then 2019 and 2020 is gonna be a blur. The color system was introduced. Um, Microsoft acquires GitHub. I think this was a pivotal point for GitHub. You know, the spotlight was put on us and kind of, you know, cemented our place. Um, we and like we had the entirety of DevOps under one application. This was super important according to uh, to Sid, and I think it kind of highlighted, you know, also the shift a little bit at that time as well for. Um, uh, breadth over depth and perhaps after that we were beginning to understand that all right depth over breadth is also super important which is where design is going to thrive as, as much as it can um so yeah catalyst for 2019 and beyond so this is kind of influenced by everything that happened beyond beyond that the web id was introduced super important uh, fun fact this reached hacker news number one uh, which was uh, kind of fun to to work on um with the blog post and it was a success story of iteratively designing a product within a product in a kind of holistic way. You know, how are we going to set up the first MVC instead of like beyond just one milestone? And that was an interesting thing to, to put in there. So um, here's like some, some product decisions, uh, how they were involving or, you know, improve, uh, how UX research was influencing product decisions. Um, we needed to know more about our users. It wasn't as easy of a problem space as we thought it was going to be. And UX research was the it was a problem there. So that's a good, um, you know, good evidence for for how important UX research was. So look into the into the blog post if you'd like. The UX team was at that point increasing from 12 to 15 people. So we already doubled in size at that time. Uh, Annabelle had become the first front end engineer to shift to UX. Uh, I kind of. I think that has a lot of influence on how we were, you know, uh, collaborating with engineering and kind of have that improved insights there as well. And we made the shift to stage groups, which was kind of important into visualizing the balance between designers, product managers, and engineers in each of the teams. Going on, UX research evidence database, super important to get us up to that maturity level as well. You know, how, where we were collecting all that, that evidence we've collected through our research uh, that was defined first in the handbook. Kind of got that towards our stage five and take this with a grain of salt, of course. Um, it doesn't apply one to one, but I'd like to think that we kind of managed, you know, went to that phase of managed usability. So going on to 2019, 20, there's so much happening at this point in time. There's so many more people into the team that have kind of collabor uh, combined all of that effort into uh, a couple of slides. And I'm gonna highlight a few. I think UX team increasing from 15 to 46, excluding technical writing is a big part of that. We rebalance product design to product manager ratio to one to one. I think this increased, you know, the sync synchronicity between product manager and product designers a lot in, you know, getting us to a strategic level of thinking. Uh, our design tooling improved a lot with Qualtrics and user testing. And of course, Figma and, and Mural have, have played a big role there as well for design thinking. Um, let me see. So, you know, the design system finally got, and I think this is one of the most important points to highlight here as well, um, scalability in our design uh, resources is super important. But up until that time, uh, the design system really didn't have a dedicated budget. So now the UX foundation team was founded, um, design system OKRs were uh, defined, or at least were part of our OKRs and kind of really propelled us forward to that place. So it was really good to see and we reap the benefits of that today very much, I would say. I love uh, seeing the new things being added to Figma. Um, I love being able to just say, use this component. It's, it's amazing uh, if you compare it to the old times. Of course, some highlights from our blog post. I think, you know, the Figma plugin is amazing. Um, a dark UI for GitLab. This has been a dream for a long time. We called like we have a special little label in our um, 
issue backlog called Moonshots, and they've been there for instance forever. And Dark UI, I forget what has been one of them as far as I can remember. And of course, our higher focus on holistic iterative design. I think this is going to be the most important to really, you know, flesh out the vision of uh, of a year or even our three year vision that is currently uh, out there. So I think. With these changes, I know this has been like really short from 2019 to 2020, where actually the most happened, I would say, got us towards the stage six, stage seven maturity level. Um, as said before, this is this is geared at you know agency-based, consumer-based design, where we are business to business and more enterprise uh, design focused. Um, but still, I think we've gone a long way, and that is where uh, you know we come to this kind of part, you know, what can we learn from the past? I think we've come become fairly mature. Um, speaking with Christy, uh, she said like, hey, uh, design embedded with cross-functional teams play a big, you know, have played a big part into getting us this far. Um, our research maturity has increased by length, I think, as, 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 as you can see, the process has, has have matured, our tooling has matured, it's easy to kind of set it up. Um, and then kind of roll through the entire life cycle of getting a research set up and then done basically. Product is invested in research. They are you know, making decisions with research right now. And um, one of the, the things we've seen in, in you know, the amount of people that have joined GitLab is there is a ceiling on how fast you can grow as, as long as you, know, you want to up that, that maturity. Um, and uh, I think we're now establishing a, a foundation to grow even better. Um, after this whole uh, COVID situation is, is, is gone, I would say. Uh, where should we be headed? I want to close this off a little bit with some quotes or at least half quotes. Um, there might be some words from my own in there, but they generally describe the thoughts of who I discuss with. These were from synthesized from raw notes. I quickly wrote down from uh, the interviews, but um, Sid said, uh, you know, we're doing uh, the best we, we can or the best in the industry with completing DevOps, but now he has a very much focus on, you know, getting us uh, the best SUS score as well. Um, he says, basically, our most used functionality isn't as smooth as, I could, uh, as, it, as it could. I think the less changes in restructuring are going to focus on this. So I think that is a positive thing to see that way, that we are geared to kind of fix our mistakes there, or at least where we can do, where, where we have opportunities to do even better. Um, then we have, of course, we were very feature oriented. We're now usage oriented, uh, especially with our SMAO, XMAO um, KPIs we we're looking at. I think this is a positive change as well. We're already on it. That's a positive thing. And uh, we are, are focusing on refining that. So I think that is uh, something we are already all doing uh, for the upping the SES score, basically. I think the um, answer from DZ was also interesting, you know, as uh, the original founder of, of, of GitLab. Um, he, he would love to see some freshness in UI and also something that really excites you as a customer to, you know, breaks away from the flow of releases. Uh, personally, if I look at our releases page, you know, our blog posts, um, this has been unchanged for a very long time. We just throw all the features together, and I think it's an awesome, amazing way to showcase them. But I think we, you know, there are some opportunities to excite our users even better by highlighting, um, you know, specific user stories in our blog posts and kind of market our improvements towards which we are doing towards our product every month even better. And then from Christy, I think uh, this was uh, very admirable to say like, hey, would like GitLab to be held up as an exemplar for developers to use, kind of like, hey, which application is amazing to use in our in our industry and the image point on GitLab uh, because it's so easy and so useful and so delightful to use basically. And I, I would say we're heading in towards that direction. Uh, collaboration on PM UX engineering, uh, most important out of all of this, let's continue to focus on that. Remove the tech UX depth. I think this has been a you know a big uh, thing with GitLab since since all time. We have such a huge application, and I would say right now is finally the time we're kind of touching upon all of that. While we used to have to pick our battles uh, back in the time as to, okay, what are we going to improve on because we cannot touch everything, and the design system is really helping out in that sense. I would say. And of course, last thing, and I think this is kind of pointing out into our, my next slide, is improve on opinionated design with community contributions. So I'm going to head 
into the into the next phase, which is my personal take here a little bit into that, is um, originally when I when I joined GitLab, um, that part of that was just because I was having fun and it was easy to contribute to GitLab in in, in every way, be that design, be that code. Um, I think with community contributions, it's become a bit harder to to contribute to GitLab because we have so much things going on and. Um, especially with community contributions these days, like where can you add real value as a community contributor? Perhaps we should make that a little bit easier and kind of, you know, get that playfulness back into contributing to GitLab. Um, even though I, I also have to say, you know, seeing GitLab progress as fast as it, as it is doing today, that is super exciting. Um, so just a little, a, a little side note there. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the bigger we grow, the harder it is to stay connected with everyone. Um, I, I always like to see that improve as, as, more, as much as we can. Uh, I also acknowledge we cannot, you know, stay a small company. We're a big company now. Um, but I think, uh, you know, a focus on, on getting and staying connected with each other is always a good thing in every company. So I would love to see, uh, uh, see us improve in, in that sense as much as we can. And that's it, actually. Um, I think we have progressed through design maturity in an amazing way. Um, I highlighted some key points uh, I thought was interesting uh, for the design maturity at GitLab, so at least our road towards that, that point in time. And um, I would like to congratulate everyone on this amazing uh, journey, especially in the last two years where everyone has been contributing, as far as I know, that are currently at the, at the, at the company. So. Thank you so much and uh, feel free to reach out if you want to know more about specifics in, 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 the, in the history of design at GitLab. Thank you.